finishing lines in sight in the league title race. Liverpool must win both their remaining games to stop Arsenal lifting the trophy. The champions will be crowned today. At the other end of the table, it's a fight for survival. Sunderland's first division futures on the line against Manchester City. But who will take the big drop to Division 2? And we look back at some of the goals of the season. Do you remember this one? Jim Rosenthal here. Welcome to our final programme from the English First Division this season. Liverpool and Arsenal have certainly kept the tension and the entertainment going until the last. Today, we have to find a winner. Last week, Liverpool came back from two down at half-time, equalising with Ronnie Rosenthal's amazing solo efforts. Rosenthal trying to weave a spell here. It's in! Liverpool had chances to take the lead too. In the end though, defensive slips let them down. Chelsea did their London neighbours a huge favour. Even so, Arsenal couldn't manage to clinch all three points and the title at Roker Park. If it hadn't been for this last minute save by David Seaman, they might even have lost. In the end, a point was enough to keep them on course. With two games to play, they need two draws or a win to become champions. Should Liverpool fail to win either of their games, Arsenal would be handed that title without a struggle. At the City Ground on Monday, Liverpool faced FA Cup finalist Nottingham Forest. Several hours before, Arsenal were to play Manchester United at Highbury. They knew they had to win to keep their hopes alive. Graham Souness made two changes from the team that played Chelsea. One forced, Gary Ablett in for the injured Gary Gillespie. One tactical, Ronnie Rosenthal earning a place in the starting lineup ahead of Peter Beardsley. Brian Clough's team, they're all playing for a place in the cup final, so expect no shortage of commitment from them. Watch for England international Steve Hodge. He's playing his first league match in over two months in midfield. The referee, that's John Martin, and the commentators at the city ground, Ian St. John, and Alan Parry. And it's Liverpool in their change strip of Silva attacking from right to left in this first half to get the game underway. Remember, if Liverpool lose today, then Arsenal are champions regardless of what happens at Highbury tonight. If Liverpool draw, of course, Arsenal need a point against Manchester United to clinch the championship. And if Liverpool win, then Arsenal need three points tonight situations could be affected by Arsenal's huge superiority in goal difference. Liverpool champions six of the last nine seasons and runners-up when they didn't actually win the title. And of course the same has got to happen this season, whether they're first or second, they can't be overtaken. It's an incredible record and even if Liverpool are runners-up, let no one believe that Liverpool are dead as out and looks for the chip. Ambitious, but I think Mark Crossley had it read all the way. A bit ambitious, but uh, as you said, Mike Crossley was about six yards out to start with Houghton saw it and went for the chip. Here we see it again. Reasonably far out, but there you are, going back. No danger. Hodge finding himself in space. This is Ian Wone. Gary Parker. Clumsy layoff. Rush almost got there. Chettle did well to keep it for Forrest. And again, neat, intricate football from the home side as Crosby looks for Glover. And Robillard did well then. He had to be strong and decisive. Some lovely build-up play by Nottingham Forest there. Um, knocked a ball around. Beautiful football. Uh, Parker went for the key. Crosby went for the cross. And Bruce, very determined to do well, I think, to do. And here goes Crosby. Put through by Clough. But he knocked the ball in the net, Alan. Surely the referee has got to give the goal. 
I mean, the Forest players are asking him. Red, look at that. He was fouled there, but the referee surely has got to say, well, you've knocked it in the net, that's a goal. There's always a possibility they might miss this. Indeed. To be fair to John Martin, he whistled instantly. Crosby went down. But he can still give a goal, Alan. Indeed he can, you're right. So, Nigel Clough has the opportunity to give Nottingham Forest the lead here. Well, Bruce, who made the dive, but had he stood straight, he had the ball would have hit him in the face. Because young club, he just hit it straight at him. Here's Speedy, finding Rush, that's a good ball. Good tackle by Ball. He's having an outstanding game, but it breaks to Houghton. Now Mulvey, back again to Barnes, and Houghton wriggling his way through. Houghton claiming that Crossley got a fingertip to that, but a goal kick. Here's the verdict. Well, Ray Houghton really has had uh, quite a couple of weeks of it as far as chances are concerned. Created a lovely little opening there. It was lovely play, and he smashed it over. Mulvey's had a Hodge. Crosby couldn't control it. Well, whatever happens today, and as each minute ticks by, the title is looking increasingly likely to go to Highbury. I'm quite sure that Liverpool have made a very good appointment in Graham Souness as manager. And anyone who thinks that this is the beginning of the end for Liverpool should think again. Here's Rosenthal. Taking on Chapel with a good turn of pace. Goes down and it's a penalty. And I think that's a bit of a controversial decision. Chapel can't believe it. Rosenthal, I thought, maybe he was looking for this here, but it was... Uh, Certainly a strong enough challenge to bring him down in full flight here. What do you think? I can't believe it either. I thought the centre half tackled, slid the ball for a corner kick, and that was that. Mr. Martin has given his second penalty of the game. This one a lot more questionable. But Jan Mulvey, who scored seven times from the spot this season, can bring Liverpool level here. Crosby doing well against Staunton. Chapel has come forward for the free kick. Off the head of Nichols, the Wone. Good effort. Oh, what a friendly goal, Ian Wone. And the scouser has scored a significant goal against the team he used to support. There's another typical Liverpool goal to lose, a ball in the air, they don't get it away, it's clicked on by Nickel. Good control here by Young Wom, and a beautiful volley, Robla no chance. Three goals in his last four games for Ian Wone, and the one time Liverpool fan might well have buried his team's title chances with that goal. Boris two. Liverpool won here, and Glover and Nicol get themselves in an unnecessary tangle. Forrest get the free kick. Well taken already. Parker. Laws. And Crosby. Oh, he's done well here. Lines from flagging, the referee has said play on. Burrows clear to Parker. Parker does well, it took a deflection. Oh, what a marvellous save from Glover. That was top locker all the way. 
and Grobelar somehow finger tipped it over as it deflected. Or did he? A countdown to the destination of the 1990-91 title of the Barclays League is into the final quarter of an hour. And at the moment, Arsenal are favourite. But Liverpool will not give up. Barnes. Rush! And he finished! Must have thought he got an equaliser then. To the dismay of the Liverpool bench, Piers cleared. But here's Houghton, back to Barnes. The shot was blocked. And Glover is fouled then by Mike Marsh. Free kick. Oh, it was a lovely skill by Liverpool. Something like the thing. A lovely little ball by Barnes. Rush beat the offsides, took it round the goalkeeper. But they're great covering by Piers. Brilliant defensive play there. Got the angle right and played it on the line won't for what could be could be the winning goal as Burrows goes in a bit strong again on uh, Steve Hodge the depth of uh, young talent here at Nottingham Forest and I must say in the next two or three years I can see this side maturing into a very very good team indeed Nottingham Forest you really have to fancy them for honours Pierce robbed by Marsh who finds Speedy played it in behind Barnes though well beat. Laws dispossessed. But it breaks for Chettle. That's a good ball. Crosby. Parker takes over. And now Clark. On to Glover. Space opens up for him, Pat. Oh, he hit the foot of the post. Now I'm lucky. Lee Glover. Well, he's a useful boy, this Alan. As I say, the first time I've seen him, I like him. He can take players on. Hit that with his left foot, Bruce, Bruce was looking for it after they hit the post. I gather the Arsenal players are all at Highbury watching the last few minutes of this. And there's some of them enjoying the sight of Nottingham Forest leading 2-1 and the probability that they're going to have a league championship medal tonight. Nickel clears. Rush not quick enough to beat Walker, who is... Chettle gets it away. Pierce forward. Out of play. Speedy wins it for Liverpool. Wembley's not in their minds. We're now into the last minute. The championship is sliding away from Anfield. And ever closer to Highbury. Under 60 seconds. For Arsenal to be officially crowned. 1991 champions of the Football League. As Liverpool give it away, Mulvey wins it back. On my watch now, we have reached 90 minutes. Our Arsenal are back to become the new championship trophy holder. Liverpool get a free kick. They're into time being added. Liverpool have got to produce something immediately. John Barnes with the shot, and Crosby has saved it to the huge relief, no doubt, of half of North London. There's the final whistle. Liverpool relinquished their title. They've lost by two goals to one here at Nottingham Forest. Handshakes and congratulations at Highbury already. Regardless of what happens tonight, when Arsenal play Manchester United, Arsenal are the new champions, and Liverpool are only runners-up. Well, congratulations. So, what a way to win the championship, David. Fantastic. It's a dream come true. Uh, you know, second league championship medal for us all. Tremendous. Great for this man. First to many, I hope, here. Alan Smith, did you think you'd win the championship like this today? You know, no, do you? I mean, we are hoping that it would be decided like that. We didn't really want to have to beat United, and uh, delighted. Arsenal let out by the skipper. Tony Adams a lovely spring evening in North London and the crowd good humoured and celebrating Arsenal champions for the second time in three seasons the pressure off for them they could really turn on the sort of style you associate with champions Manchester United playing in the European Cup Winners Cup final the first to suffer the commentators Gary Lineker and Brian Moore 
quick throw there. Dixon. And Alan Smith getting his 24th of the season. Merson's throw, Dixon putting it across, Smith finishing it off, Arsenal in the lead. Robbins. There's Campbell. Smith up ahead of him. Ferguson's after him, and he might find it hard to get rid of Campbell. Is Smith. It was, and a lovely ball with the outside of his foot that was perfectly weighted into Alan Smith's pass. We'll see it here. He cuts in, sees Alan Smith making a good run outside of the foot. Alan Smith takes in his stride and just places it in the far corner. Dixon again. Person. Comes to Adams. But that was some power. And whether he's given a penalty inside the box, there he has. United player inside the box. I just think um, the North Bank might have had something to do with that. That was a big cheer went up. Um, it was one of those where he hit the ball very hard from a short space. And I was, I always think they're a little harsh. Um, I, I can't see how he intended it. It'd be interesting to see the replay. But what's interesting also, Gary, is they've given it to Alan Smith instead of Lee Dixon, who normally takes the penalties. Alan Smith on a hat trick on this night of celebration for Arsenal big striker whose goals have been so valuable over the last three or four seasons for Arsenal. And he's looking for the golden boot for the top score, so desperately wants to score. A hat-trick for Alan Smith. 3-0 for Arsenal. McClare. Now, will Robbins get on the end of this one? He's going to give a penalty. A foul by Seaman on Robbins. And United have the possibility of a late consolation. And a 30th clean sheet of the season might now be beyond them. A bit unfortunate, Dave Seaman there. He's got a touch on the ball, he's knocked it away, and then he's fell over his body, so that's probably even be tough anyway. Well, Steve, nice. Steve Bruce. Have a look at him. 18 goals this season, Gary. Yeah, he's 10 of them from the spot. Mind you, it might just sort up those seasons, season if he saves them. Let's see. You don't save those. And Manchester United pull one back. 3 1. Another victory for the Gunners, who could still finish with just one defeat against their name all season. We'll show you that final game against Coventry a bit later on. But as Tony Adams raises the Barclays League First Division trophy, let's look back on a remarkable season. It wasn't all plain sailing. Lippard made a long run to get himself involved, and Keith Hackett has given the goal. That's an almost lovely back heel. Smith with a shot, a fantastic goal. With the destination of the championship trophy settled, the only issue to resolve on the final weekend is who will join Derby County in the second division next year. Sunderland certainly faced the sterner test, playing at fifth place Manchester City, while Luton are at home to Derby. Aston Villa, who were still in danger last Saturday, well, they solved their problems earlier this week.
David Platt turned down a £4.7 million move to Bari in Italy. And after only nine minutes, he proves his worth to the Villa. It's his cross and Mark Bowen turns it into his own net. Villa in front. Just before the interval, though, Norwich are level. Dale Gordon leaves Nigel Spink helpless. A draw would have been enough to ensure Villa's first division survival. They make absolutely sure midway through the second half. Good work from Tony Cascarino and Dwight York heads the winner for Villa. The first win in nine games, it keeps them in Division One. Yes, the Villa safe. Below them, Luton and Sunderland are level on points and goal difference. Luton have scored four more goals. Sunderland's task is clear-cut. They must produce a better result to stay up. Your commentator, as ever, Martin Tyler. Sunderland won't expect any favours from this city side. Striker Wayne Clark comes in in place of the injured Mark Ward. Peter Reid had hoped to select himself, but he's still troubled by a knee injury. Goalkeeper Tony Coton is suspended. The reserve Andy Dibble is on loan at Middlesbrough. So 19-year-old Martin Margotson plays in the first division for only the second time. But he came through well last Saturday in a testing league debut away to Manchester United. Sunderland have lost two of their most committed characters to suspension. Defender Kevin Ball and Gordon Armstrong in midfield. Richard Ord, an England under-21 international, comes in at the back. And Warren Hawke continues to stand in for Armstrong. There is a recall for Peter Davenport up front. And some good news for Sunderland this morning. Left-back Paul Hardiman passed a fitness test after missing the preparation for this vital game with a glandular problem. And Sunderland do have the spur here of performing in front of their fantastic supporters. There can scarcely be a football fan left on Wearside. More than 10,000 here hoping to play their part. And most of them well used now to last day dramas. Referee Alan Gunn will be told next week whether he will be awarded an extra year on the Football League list. He's 48 now. He's reached the usual retirement age. Sunderland have been down in Manchester since Thursday. Major preparations for a day of destiny. They defend the goal to the left in the first half. John Kay wears number 11 but plays at right back. With the greatest respect to Luton Town, there is a feeling throughout football that the First Division would love to see Sunderland survive. Gabbiadini gets in the cross with Alan Gunn. He's given Sunderland the free kick. Pasco floating the ball. Sunderland have sent both centre backs forward. Gary Howard is waiting way beyond the far post, making his run now. It's left for Pasco to take. Oh, and the header was blocked with the goalkeeper betraying his inexperience it was Gabbiadini at the far post and very nearly a flying start for Sunderland but now they might be in trouble Harper Heath and Hardiman leads it to Norman but this was the moment when hopes were raised so high for Sunderland for an electric start what will encourage Sunderland is Manchester City's rather poor defensive record the weakest of the leading clubs only four clean sheets in 37 first division games Peter Reid will want to tidy that up for next season but City do have the capacity to get goals and it's an interesting uh, formation really with three up front David White who has been playing through the middle is still there and hasn't been pushed back to his more usual role wide on the right hand side so he's there quinn is there and clark as well and quinn is onside if he can get it down here the trouble for sunderland who scored niall quinn after 10 minutes So this three-pronged attack pays dividend in as much as one of the strikers makes a goal here and takes it cleverly 
Quinn got the better of Kay and then had uh, a confrontation with Norman which he won as well Paul Hardiman stays down inside his own penalty area well Brady comes on to go to the left hand side Warren Hawke has moved to the right John Kay has gone to left back and Gary Hours to a position that he knows pretty well at right back Bracewell He points to his chest, but the referee has spotted it. Pasco was turning the ball there into space. And he might have been first to fill that space. It's a free kick for Sunderland. Bracewell and Hawk over the ball. And here comes Hours. Marketson drops down very quickly. Colin Pascoe with the decoy here. And Gary Hours, as you can see from this angle, had a good view of the goal. Pascoe put into play here with Kay. And goes down. between Pasco and Kay and the cross that was met right on the meet by Marco Gabbiadini John Kay has had to move to left back and he showed his aptitude for it with that storming run and what a great header and the Sunderland support well they're jubilant Gabbiadini who spent much of the first half in offside positions but he finds White here and the shot is wide David White shot he was challenged as uh, he let go and maybe that just put him off target trying to pinch it back for Sunderland good play by Bracewell this is Brady on his good left foot it's a teasing cross Bennett is there back from ours there are two over on the far side for Sunderland and the ball didn't quite drop for either of them Davenport or Brady it's the crosses that are troubling Manchester City there's another one here and Niall Quinn recognising the danger getting to it for City at the far post Pasco who is a big influence at the moment Davenport and now Bennett can they play it right here not quite Gabbiadini tries to curl one Hendry got in the way that wasn't a foul because Gabbiadini got to the ball as well as Poynton Redmond's header is miscued it's gone behind for a corner will just be time for it to be taken it's a question now of how long Alan Gunn will add on he's just having a look at his watch we've had 45 minutes Bracewell Davenport Bennett goal for Sunderland and Gary Bennett has come back to Main Road. And put Sunderland into the lead in this frenetic period just before half-time. Davenport volleyed towards goal and Bennett made sure the ball went in via the goalkeeper. What a turnaround. 
was mishit in truth by Davenport. It turned out to be a great cross. Here's Quinn, who had given Manchester City the lead. In the depths of adversity here, Sunderland are coming on strong. throw Heath Hours miss kicks and Quinn has equalised desperate moment for Hours two for Quinn two for Manchester City and when Sunderland needed to keep calm Try to hook it away and put it on a plate for Quinn. And the way his season has gone, he's not missing gifts like that. It is half time. And really, it's hard to put a perspective on the 45 minutes here. It's been a, a good half an hour, Quinn, who put Manchester City in front and then equalised after Gary Bennett against his old club had got the second for Sunderland. Hard on the heels of the first from Marco Gabbiadini. What will they make of it all in the Sunderland supporters' ranks here? And what will they make of it all when they hear the news down at Kenilworth Road? At half time at Main Road, it's Manchester City 2, Sunderland 2. And Sunderland have 45 minutes in which to try and ensure they will be playing in this division next season Gabbiadini with a positive beginning to the half in fact Davenport was so anxious he got in the way of Gabbiadini's shot which I don't think would, would have unnerved Martin Margotson Harper Heath Cross is on for Quinn he's got to it and he's angled it behind Wayne Clark to Sunderland's considerable relief and here's the counter-attack led by Davenport Howard to the right, Brady to the left Davenport on his own through the centre it's a glorious run pushed out by Margotson and Brady can't get to it and Sunderland have a free kick after a really heroic burst by Peter Davenport who carried all before him was only denied a superb solo goal by this 19-year-old goalkeeper. Grace Rolanda Pasco looking for a route forward again. And they might have found it with Gabbiadini. Can Sunderland go back in front? No! And uh, they look in vain for a penalty. Gabbiadini seems to have done everything here. Great approach work to give him the ball in the first place. He slipped the goalkeeper but couldn't slip it in from a tightish angle. You'll see just how tight here. Henry went for him, and so did Margotson. Quinn. Heath. And that completes it for Manchester City. David White. But the far post means a City win. Sunderland defeated here and out of the first division. Sunderland have entertained over the last nine months often enough, but they just haven't acquired enough points for their skills. And there is no survival for them in this extraordinary scenario on the last day of the season Dennis Smith accepts his fate with good grace Sunderland who came up by an unusual route but they haven't been able to hold on to their place they might have done after a glorious first half here the spectators and the players are united here in their grief City will look back fondly on the last nine months
and we'll reflect on the unusual double that relegation for Derby three weeks ago and for Sunderland today was confirmed on this ground. Manchester City three, Sunderland two, Sunderland along with Derby are relegated. In it goes, and it's in! It's an own goal! Harper went for it, but put the ball into his own net. John Dreyer's come up on the edge of the area. Priest into the middle. And here's Kingsley Black. This is Elstrup. Two nil to Luton. Earlier in the week, it's Derby's last home game. Manager Arthur Cox makes a few experiments, but Derby are down after 15 minutes. Tony Coddy heads in Pat Nevin's cross. Midway through the first half, though, Derby are level. Ted McMinn for Paul Williams. And he's brought down by Dave Watson. Watson definitely catches the forward's arm, but he might be a bit fortunate to get that decision. And it's Mick Harford given the job. And he beats Welsh International Neville Southall from the 12 yards. Everton have to wait till late in the second half for their second goal. Tony Coddy has had a resurgence in form. He's passed the defender. His effort comes to nothing. But Kevin Shide is there to knock it in. Seven minutes from time, it looks like Derby have managed to get a draw. The ball crossed into the area and the Welsh international Dean Saunders with a great scissor kick making it two all his 21st of the season possibly though his last goal for Derby but now County lose concentration and let Everton back into it just a minute later and a great glancing header from Tony Coddy gives Everton three points his 24th of the season Time the Yorkshire Derby at Ellen Road. Mel Sterling with a free kick from just outside the box leads in front just 11 minutes gone and stays that way till half time. Dave Bassett's side though typically push leads all the way. Seven minutes after the interval they get their equaliser. Run into the box from Dean. His shock half blocked by Lukic. Brian Marwood with the easiest of tappings. But just three minutes later, Leeds regain the lead thanks to some appalling United defending. Bob Booker's terrible back pass. Carl Schutt is through. He beats Simon Tracy with ease. Leeds two, Sheffield United one. Well, Graham Soonis is hoping to bring fresh faces to Anfield next season after losing the championship to Arsenal could mean an end-of-season clear out of Liverpool. Pretty safe bet though that Ian Rush will still be around. His goal puts Liverpool ahead against Spurs just before half-time. Spurs with their minds on the FA Cup final against Forest next Saturday. No surprise really when Liverpool go two up. Ray Houghton's cross finds David Speedy in space. Liverpool finish the season on a high. Spurs without a win in their last five games going to Wembley. Well, last week, Chelsea put pay to Liverpool's championship hopes and they start with a flourish at Villa Park. Two goals in the first four minutes. The first to Jason Cundy. 60 seconds later, another of Chelsea's homegrown youngsters, Graham Stewart, makes it two. So Chelsea looked like marking Bobby Campbell's last match in charge with a real goal glut, but now back come the Villa. Cowan's a nice touch from Cascarino. Price on the overlap. And Cascarino making tracks and heading a fine goal past Besant. Cascarino involved in the Villa equaliser as well. Rather fortunate to get the penalty decision as the Chelsea defenders converge. 
David Platt, who's turned down the opportunity to make himself a millionaire in Italy, gets Villa's point from the spot. Villa 2, Chelsea 2. A week before the cup final, Forrest involved in the seven-goal thriller at the city ground. Early on, it looks very easy against Leeds. Gary Parker puts them in front, just four minutes played. Forrest are in great form at the moment. They just can't stop scoring goals. Four minutes later, Nigel Clough is on hand from close range. The ball comes back smartly from Crosby, and that's 2-0. Midway through the first half, Leeds pull one back. Typically incisive pass played by the skipper, Gordon Strachan, for Lee Chapman, and Chapman takes it past Crossley. 2-1, number 30 of the season for Chapman, once a Forest player, of course. 20 minutes to go now, and Forest look to be well on the way to a comfortable three points. They've been swarming around the Leeds goal, and there's number two of the afternoon for Gary Parker. This time, it's a firm header beyond John Lukic. 3-1 to Forest. Now there's real drama as Forrest fall apart in the last 15 minutes and Leeds get right back into it. What a magnificent season Chapman is having. He makes it 3-2 with the 200th goal of his career. A pretty simple one. His 31st of the season though and Lee Chapman top scorer in the first division. Just a couple of minutes later, Leeds are level. Forrest caught terribly square at the back. Carl Schutt takes it beyond Crossley and the net gates. Three all. Lead celebrating, but not for long. Four minutes from time, Forrest get the winner. Ian Wone for Hodge, and Clough beats Lukic. Forrest then unbeaten in the last seven matches. Mind you, it could have been five, but John Lukic saves Clough's penalty, and then the post denies Hodge. What a thriller, though. There's an early gift for Palace at Selhurst Park, a fumble by United keeper Gary Walsh and a chance for Ian Wright, his 25th of the season after only three minutes. United perhaps with other things on their mind, they go to Rotterdam on Wednesday for the Cup Winners' Cup Final against Barcelona and they rested six regulars, no surprise when Palace go further ahead through John Solarco just before the hour. It's been an excellent season for Palace. They finished third in the league, their best position ever, and they get number three with just under 20 minutes to go. Solarco is on target once again, and it's a superb effort from all of 20 yards. Well, Norwich, the visitors to Bramall Lane, and they go ahead after just 10 minutes. Defender John Polston forces it home from close range. Dave Bassett's side get their momentum going after that. Three minutes later, they're level. Tony Agarn has been dogged by injury nearly all season. He had a really good last day of the season, going past two defenders to get the equaliser. All the scoring in the first 20 minutes, and United make sure of all three points. Agarna once more doing the damage. A really clever turn from him, and he beats Wolfen in the Norwich goal. Sheffield United 2, Norwich 1. Everton get their noses in front at Loftus Road after 18 minutes. The Irish international Kevin Sheedy opens up the Rangers' defence. A free-running goal for the Scottish international Pat Nevin and a neat finish beyond Stayscout. Rangers get their equaliser from a set-piece right on half-time. Flicked on by Barnsley, Southall can't hold it. Roy Wegley heads the equaliser. Score draw to finish at Loftus Road. Down at the Dell, Southampton are in front right before half-time. Some good work by Alan McLaughlin. And Jimmy Case slots it in. Would you believe it? His first league goal of the season on the final Saturday. Early in the second half, the Dons get their equaliser across from Laurie Sanchez and John Fashionu finishes it off. That's his 20th of the season. The Saints won, the Dons won. A 
At Highbury, the champions Arsenal round off their season in great style. They go on a scoring spree against Terry Butcher's Coventry. The first, though, courtesy of an own goal, run from Paul Merson, and the deflection into his own net by the unfortunate Trevor Peake. Arsenal make it two on the half hour, and once again, they've got some over-generous Coventry defending to thank. This time it's Andy Pierce's header, intended for his keeper there. The Swedish international Anders Limpar gets there first. Coventry get back into it before half-time through the Scott Kevin Gallagher after a scramble. Just the 18th goal Arsenal have conceded all season. There won't be any more because George Graham sides keep their best to last. They put four goals past Coventry in the last 13 minutes. 77 minutes gone now. And David Hillier, who's come in so well into the Arsenal side, picks up Alan Smith, Arsenal's third, and Alan Smith's 27th of the season. The Gunners really finishing with a great flourish. Just a couple of minutes later, Limpar's turn once again. Good work from Campbell. And the Swede gets his second of the day. 4-1, Arsenal. And they're not finished yet. Just four minutes to go, and Anders Limpar's hat-trick, and number five for the champions. Long ball from Lee Dixon. Limpar is through, and round of Grzovich he goes for a stylish finish. What a great way to round off his first season in the Barclays League. If Coventry thought their agony was over, they were wrong. Arsenal hit them for six. Fullback Nigel Winterburn sets up Perry Groves. The champions celebrate in style. They're the first team this century to lose just one game on their way to winning the league. And so Arsenal celebrate their championship with their biggest win of the season. While Manchester United and Tottenham will both claim they've got more important cup ties to worry about, that certainly didn't stop Nottingham Forest chalking up another impressive victory. Confirmation of the final positions then, of course, Arsenal comfortable victors in the end. Manchester United, they've got a game to play against Spurs. It won't affect their final position. Spurs, though, could move into the top half of the table. They'll be more concerned about the FA Cup final. Sunderland and Derby County, they're relegated. In their place come four teams from the second division. Oldham promoted as champions, along with West Ham and Sheffield Wednesday, plus one of the next four. They're all involved in the playoffs next month. One last accolade goes to Lee Chapman of Leeds United. He was the top scorer in the first division this season with 31 goals, the biggest haul of his long career. Well, we've certainly seen goals in quantity and with no shortage of quality. We leave you with a selection of moments and names to remember from the first division this season. Until next season, bye-bye. Loitering on the left. And he scored the goal. The player who's filled the ground really. Bar. Price first to him again. Much strength as he can muster. Oh my word! What can you do about that? Absolutely nothing. This is a fearful strike. Like that! Mackey takes over for Leeds. Now Strachan to Chapman. That's a good return ball. And Strachan's onside. Carl Schott arriving on the far side of the penalty area. He didn't need him! What a marvellous finish!
Still with Manchester United and Lee Sharp onto the right foot. It's another one! 3-0! A fantastic goal by Lee 